In our PLC this morning, our topic is going to cover writing instruction. We have a large number of threes that we want to make sure we move into a four category to reach proficiency for the state TCAP assessment. Uh, we want to identify what our largest hurdle is. We've invited our sixth grade teachers to meet with us as well because they actually showed higher gains than what our fifth grade has and we want to include them in our conversation in terms of best practices and instructional strategies and brainstorm and collaborate with that team as well. Before we go any further, um, I'll facilitate this meeting. Ms. Kareef will be our When we begin keeper, our data discussions, we and usually um, name the facilitator. Uh, I'll be today's facilitator. We find a um, timer, someone who kind of keeps us on track and, and keeps track of the time that has elapsed while we're talking and gives us visual cues that when it's time to move on. Um, we'll also have a recorder, someone who's taking notes, um, so that as we refer back to what we've talked about, we'll have some, someone there that give us very accurate, accurate information. So again, our agenda and our goal or our objective is to look at our writing scores and see how we can move as many as possible into the proficient or above category. So Bobby, if you'll go to the first fifth grade slide. As you see here, the second stage is our data discussion. Um, this was at the help with Bobby Hurley and the data warehouse team. We will actually put up graphs, histograms, and look at our data to look at our growth or to look at any regression that we might have. Everyone will get an opportunity to share and the timekeeper will follow that person to make sure that we continue to stay on track and everyone gets an opportunity to speak about the data. Sixth grade. We're only looking, I believe, at November to December data. Um, looks like you have 2% of zeros, your ones decrease from 4 to 3%, twos decrease from 21 to 18%, <coughs> threes 35 to 26%, and your fours increased from 30 to 35%. Tremendous gain on your fives from 7 to 15%, and your sixes from 1 to 3. What do you see your objective for this meeting? I think we should increase, I mean, we've got obviously got good gains from threes to fours, um, but I think we now should concentrate on getting more fours and fives. Because um, hopefully if we continue how we've been doing, the threes would just decrease anyway. So aim, shoot four fives and sixes now instead of, you know, kind of concentrating most on fours. So con continue the instructional approaches that you already have in place. Continuing and improving on them, yeah. Continuing and improving, okay. And then, Bobby, if you'll show us the fifth and sixth grade gains. For fifth grade, you had a gain, and these are for scores four and higher, so proficient and higher. You moved 8.1% of your students, and this is um, between November to December. Mm -hmm. There was not a lot of instructional time. You guys really hit the ground running, put a lot of great practices to work. So you've increased in this area 8%. Sixth grade has an impressive 14.4 percent, moving, <laughs> moving those kids from proficient and higher, 14.4 percent. So our overall goal, as we've established, is that we need our, our minimum. We need at least 89 percent proficient, which means scoring four or higher. So we now need to open the floor to you guys and talk briefly about instructional strategies, approaches, things you think that will show growth, things that you've seen that um, you know has shown growth. And so what is, what's something that you see as most effective in terms of instructional strategy? Well, one thing, and I think that fifth grade was saying it also in terms of the Our next section is to discuss instructional strategies. We'll then begin a brainstorming session um, on what works for individual teachers, especially those teachers who have shown tremendous gain. Um, everyone will get an opportunity to speak with, again, the timekeeper following them to make sure we stay on track. Um, the note keeper will take notes on these instructional strategies so that at the end we can come back and review those and decide what works best for us. Okay, at this point we want to brainstorm instructional strategies. What is a best practice that we can put into place that you guys can agree to that within the next two weeks, this is what we're hitting on, this is our focus, this is what we're going to do. 
one of the good things we did with sixth grade was use some of their our fives and sixes mm -hmm. use peer anchor papers as opposed to some you know person they don't know it can be done that, there are writers right that are room. right there that they talk to and one of the things that I know we could do I guess a sixth grade team pull some of our fives and sixes share those with the fifth grade because they know those students as well to use idea. those as anchor papers that's a great idea we hadn't talked about um, going back and forth with fifth and sixth grade and sharing that writing you've actually pointed out those you know those good um, I just want to say those uh, good writing techniques that he used, mm -hmm. which made his paper, uh, it was a five. And, you know, when you pointed them out, it's like my students were like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like it clicked. Mm -hmm. And I think that was good for them to see that it's actually someone in your class mm -hmm. that, you know, that, you know, was able to write a five paper mm -hmm. using these type of strategies. So. so I know a lot of us have our kids stand up and share their papers once they finish writing them, and I just made a slight twist or deviation on that, mm -hmm. and I took her student's paper and put her student beside me at the front of the room. We sat down. I read the paper aloud, and then, you know, every great thing I came to, I really praised the student, talked about it, and you could see the kids in, in the audience looking at their papers like, I, wait, do I have that? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that seems to be pretty powerful, and, and that was from Regie Routman's book. Yeah. Amber, do you have anything to add? Well, I've talked a lot about graphic organizers and thinking before you write. They're, they are thinking before they're writing, but they're not going back to that. I'm mm -hmm. looking at their writing and then seeing their graphic organizer and they're just two different things. They're not, they're, they're thinking and they're doing that, but they're not using it. Ms. Leos will read the list to us of um, our brainstorm of our instructional strategies. And just as she's reading it, if we could kind of come to a consensus on maybe three items that we will focus heavily on between now and February 2nd. The next step is our action plan. We look at the notes that we have compiled as we brainstormed, and we look at those which would be the easiest for us to implement within a time frame that we've set. In this case, it's 10 instructional days, and our team will identify um, at least one but no more than three instructional strategies that they want to put in place and will agree to um, that they that they will do these things and put them in place so that we can follow the data instructional strategies anchor papers use peer anchor papers read aloud papers and point out the good writing skills make sure to inform students that the writing is not talk writing and group by writing scores Connect Wednesday, um, use for writing and work on the pacing and practice free writing skills with um, the graphic, organizer. graphic organizers. So of the list that she read off, can, can you guys give me some ideas of which ones you feel like are the most important that you really want to hit on and focus on within the next two weeks? On, on these two Connect Wednesdays, we do the the pre-writing, the graphic organizer, that that's our focus, but make it fun, like you were saying, where they're working maybe in groups even doing that. That kind of connects several of the things that we were talking about, and it gives us some time away from our regular, you know, instructional time. It gives us that extra hour. Okay, what else? I think the group by writing scores and ability is... To do that small group the, instruction yes. with those kids. That is mm -hmm. To do some grouping, mm -hmm. decide, either based on skill or writing, level mm -hmm. that I need to meet with these kids and we really need to talk about about what's happening. So again on our action plan it would be small group instruction based on need or level of writing ability. Mm -hmm. Okay so we have our action plan. Um, do we have any comments from our observers? Our last section is for the observer comments. When we create a fishbowl, we like to have those who are observing us um, give us their suggestions, their input, and their ideas as we wrap up the session. Uh, I see a process that's, that has come from infancy to just the height of what it should be. It was a great conversation, a great outline, and I think with all these things you've decided, you're going to make the force. I do think so.